Monetizing real estate was an emergency option, but I don't think it is it is money uh, in the sense that um, money is a market good that you buy in order to exchange it for something else later. A hamburger is a market good for you to consume. I buy a hamburger not to exchange it for anything later. I buy a hamburger to eat it. Okay. Real estate is a market good to consume. You buy real estate to live in it and to go to bed in it and to seek shelter when it's snowing outside. I buy real estate to consume it. I don't buy real estate to exchange it for something later. Now, nowadays, that is a market phenomenon because the dollar is such a piece of shit and everyone has to go seek out other market goods for uh, to act as money. Does that make sense? Quickly, before I... People are always talking about how great it is to invest in real estate. And no one is taking time to talk about negatives. There are many issues with real estate investment. The main problem I see is people are looking at real estate as an investment instead of what it actually is, a commodity. Well, if you want to use real estate as an investment or a form of saving, you have to compare it with other forms of savings and investment, other forms of monetary asset, I would say, and make a choice. Now, money is a medium of exchange, and for it to perform this duty properly, it has to have various characteristics, properties of money. It has to be a store of value, it has to be a unit of measurement, it has to be portable, it has to be limited in supply, it has to be a medium of exchange, it has to be divisible, it has to be scarce, it has to be durable, it has to be acceptable, it has to be fungible, and of course, it has to be recognizable. For an asset to be fungible, it has to be identical and interchangeable. We know land is not fungible because two pieces of land are not identical and not interchangeable. A piece of land in one area will be worth more than a piece of land in another area, even if it has the exact same area, then scarcity. Land is not actually scarce. You can see this from moving out of the city and looking at the whole view. Land is not scarce, and I'll talk more about this later. Divisibility. I cannot give you 1% of my land for something. I can give you 10% of my land for something. And also, I can't transport my land. Let's say I want to buy something in a factory. I can't transport my land to another location to exchange it for something else. This is a very big problem when you're looking at an asset as money. Yes, it's a bit durable because it cannot be destroyed. The land itself, in theory, can be destroyed. But if you build on it, it can collapse and it will collapse. Buildings can easily perish, especially when you're looking at the modern day houses we have today that are built with the lowest possible quality, lowest quality of materials and I can go, I can literally spend a whole day talking about our building materials and building methods these days and how they've been uniform and poorly made for the past couple of decades I would say at least. Okay. And yes, the scarcity thing, land only looks scarce when you are in urban areas, when you are within a compact city. If you move out of the city, you would notice clearly that there's a lot of free land, a lot of unused land. Well over 60% of the land in the whole earth has not been used to build. And not just that, we can easily break down current structures and build high rise. And with modern architecture, we are building more and more vertically high rise buildings of multiple stories, which solves the problem of limited land space within the city. The only reason why we think land is scarce is because everyone is living in the city. If you live in the city and everyone is compact together, it will seem as if there's no land. But if you just look just outside the city, you can see there's new buildings coming up everywhere. Yes. You know, we are, we are, we are excavating new places and cultivating new, uh, new land to build on. So it's not, it's not, um, it's not scarce in any ways. It's not limited in supply like the claim is, you know. Not scared that scarce, scarcity is more of a scarcity is, isn't a 
scarcity comes from volume. Land is just as scarce as water. You can claim that there's only a limited amount of water on Earth, but as long as we've not been able to tap into 1% of the water supply, it's not scarce. That is just true. It's not scarce. And even people people, people die and leave their land. A lot of things happen where we get access to land that has already been used. Land, land that has already been used can also be reused. The land is not as scarce as people claim it is. Yes, it's somewhat scarce, but not uh, not limited in supply like this. You know, there's a max cap and this is the only amount of land that can be built and we've already used, let's say, 90% of it or something upset like that. Now, you could look into building the house or purchasing one. And um, the first issue I have with purchasing um, the houses, I mean, the quality of the house you're getting. You're getting a house where I've, I've been to many of the real estate companies and I see the way you build. Not only I don't want to even begin, and now I don't want to even begin talking about materials, but they're using, they're building the cheapest possible way because they want to be able to sell in the market. So they're using the lowest, they're using the lowest quality of materials they could find and building as quickly as possible so they can make as much return as they can. They're not building the best quality buildings to sell. They're trying to make a return. So they have to use trash materials and maybe make it look pretty in a way and tidy it up with the finishing and make their profit. No one is thinking of how to, you know, build with the most expensive materials or use brick. And even if you're building yourself to sell, there's a lot of problems when it comes to building to sell or even to loan because of the quality of the whole thing. Because of the quality of building and everything, you are going to run into many challenges when it comes to building of your... You are going to run into many challenges when it comes to building. If you want to build and sell in the market, you are going to have to build low quality buildings to be able to compete. And if you can't sell people, you are running at a loss because you have to maintain the low quality materials you are using. If you are building to loan to rent, sorry, you are building to rent out, you are also going to face that challenge where you have to build a very low quality uh, standard of building so you can rent at a very cheap cost because you're competing against other people who are building with the low quality low quality materials to rent out and this the next problem you're going to face not only the durability not only are you going to face a lot of cost in maintaining that building you're going to have to demolish that building this is something people don't take into account the building is not forever you once you build a house it doesn't just stay there for like 100 years the hundred years is not even a lot. Like older, older buildings probably last a thousand years or something because we build it high quality bricks and we use high quality wood and we are trying to get the best quality into the market. But currently, everyone is using weaker cement and steel and materials that are not as tough and resilient as you know. And even the building method is flawed. And so, and I'm saying this as an architect, I know what I'm saying. I'm talking about building method is flawed. So we are trying to build something cheap, but we are not looking at like the long term because those buildings don't last the test of time. So this is just it.